Nobody loves a customs man, except perhaps his wife. But as long as there are taxes to be collected, I suppose you could class us as a necessary evil. The great majority of the public are honest enough, but you'll always get a few smart Alex who try to avoid paying their whack. And for them, the water guard, they're the chaps in uniform you meet at the ports, are the country's first line of defense. Long experience has taught them that things are seldom exactly what they seem. If you think you could put one over on them, then you're in for a big surprise. The big smuggling rings are a different matter. To deal with them, the Customs and Excise has its own CID, the investigation branch. We get some pretty strange cases too, I can tell you. But I think the strangest was what began as the Seabriness affair. All right, now let's see if I've got this correct. We've had complaints that some naval types have been landing stores on the Seabree Nest Bird Sanctuary and disturbing the birds. And you want it stopped. Is that it? We'd be very grateful if you'd look into it. Right. I'll send a man down. But I won't make any promises. Birds are a bit out of our line, you know. <laughs> But I'm here on business. Well, have you any authority? My name's Kenyon, Michael Kenyon. May I ask yours? Queensway. Mrs. Queensway? Uh, no, Lady Flavia Queensway, actually. People call me Birdie. Really? Yes, I don't quite know why. Are you the police? Not exactly, no. I'm uh, in the customs and excise. Well, why aren't you in uniform, then? Well, I'm in the investigation branch. We're like the CID, you know, plain clothes. Here's my commission. That'll explain everything. Sorry, but you see, people keep barging in here and disturbing the birds. You know, we get trippers and hikers and courting couples. They're all right, of course, because they're mostly quiet. But when you get the Navy dumping all their stalls right near where my Samarkand sand martins are nesting, well, it's a bit thick. And that's what I've come down here about. We've had a complaint. Uh, when did all this happen? Last week, the 10th. I see. Was it you who made the complaint? <laughs> yes, I think it was. I made a fearful stick. Oh. And you know what they said? No. No naval units operating in your area. And I'd just seen them with my own eyes. Would you care to show me exactly where all this happened? Yes, I'd love to. And I'll show you my Samarkand sand martins if you're interested. Well, I don't know very much about birds, except, well, they're not the well, kind. They're um, absolutely fascinating. Okay. Come on, it's over here. <laughs> Hope you like it. Very cosy. Oh, dear, as I thought. The eggs are still there, but the hen's missing. See? Have a look. See them? No, I'm afraid I can't. About 15 feet on our right. Oh, yes, I see. Well, there was a bird fluttering down. Oh, quick, let's have a look. Oh, how lovely, it's the hen. She's come back. Take it gently, old lady. Easy does it. Oh, how lovely. You know what that lovely creature is, don't you? No, I'm afraid I don't. It's one of the last five Samarkand sand martins in the whole world. Goodness gracious me. Two years ago, everyone thought they were extinct. Really? They nested, and it would be such a ghastly tragedy if anything was to happen to the eggs. Oh, it would, I mean, yes. they'd be extinct again. And the Navy come with their great trucks, mess it all up. Makes me spit. They, they've got twisted beaks, you know. Have they? 
Uh, look, all oh, this is very interesting, Lady Flavia, but where did you see these trucks? Oh, I'll show you. Come on. You see that boy out there? Yes. Well, they landed just the other side of that. Well, what sort of a boat was it? Oh, one of those wartime landing craft things. With the crew in uniform? Yes. What happened to the stores they landed? Well, they loaded them on a truck and drove them about a mile along onto the main road. You wouldn't know what the stores consisted of, I suppose? Mm, no, wooden boxes. Did you speak to the men? No, they're too far away. They'd gone by the time I got there. How many times has this happened? Twice. When? The first time was when the Matabili geese were nesting, 29th. And uh, the second was the day I saw the dapple wing clover tit, on the 4th. Lady Flavia, I'd like to stick around for a day or two, just in case they return. May I come back tomorrow? Well, all right, but you will be frightfully quiet and not disturb the birds, oh. won't you? You can use my hide. Hide? Yes, you know, where we were just now. Oh, that tent. Yes, well, you can make it your HQ. But you will be jolly quiet, won't you? Oh, I promise. Yes. Bye. Bye. You don't want to take any account of Lady Flavia. Sometimes she sees things that other people don't see. She does. You mean you don't believe there's anyone there at all? No, this time she was right. They were there on the 29th, all right. Well, how do you know? Because I spoke to them. You did? I saw them from the road. I goes down, I says, Sugar? Yeah, thank you, right. What might you be doing? And the officer explained they were on manoeuvres, secret manoeuvres. And they didn't want any fuss made. I reckon that's why the Admiralty said they hadn't got nobody there. Ah. Are you sure they were Navy? No doubt about it. I'm an old Navy man myself. You didn't notice what ship they came from, I suppose? Oh, I might have made a note of that. It was HMS... <coughs> Warrior. Well, I can tell you definitely there have been no units operating in that area for at least six months. Anyway, why should we want to land stores? It's the other way round with us, dear boy. We don't want them ashore, we want them afloat. And you're quite sure there shouldn't have been any of your people in that area? Positive. Then I've got a bit of a shock for you. The police sergeant at Seabrinair spoke to the party on the 29th. He says quite definitely they were Navy, from HMS Warrior. How did he know that? Well, you chaps have a funny little habit of wearing the name of your ship on your cap band. Has Warrior been in the North Sea lately? Well, as a matter of fact, she has. Just a moment. The uh, 29th, you said? That's right. Well, I've got a bit of a shock for you, dear boy. She was in the North Sea until the 26th. She left that morning for the Med. She's been there ever since. I see. If they were smuggling, why on earth should they dress up in naval uniform? Only drawing attention to themselves. No, I'm not so sure. Nobody's going to question a service unit in uniform. It's a sort of passport to respectability. Look at your police sergeant. He believed them. <laughs> He'd have believed anything. They're a methodical lot, whoever they are. Every six days, regular as clockwork. If they keep it up, they're due back on the 16th. Well, that's Saturday. Well, what do you want to do? Well, sir, I'd like to have a dozen men standing by to see if we can pick them up. All right, I'll ring the water guard. Give me the IGW, please. Good morning, Lady Flavia. Shut up. Oh, I'm sorry. Hello. Hello. I thought you were going back yesterday. Uh, we think that there's naval types. We'll be back on Saturday. On Saturday? So I wondered if you mind if we brought some chaps up to make further inquiries. Oh, look, I, I can't have people around here now disturbing the birds. Well, you want the matter settled, don't you? Yes, but Saturday. Well, I only hope the sand martins have hatched by then. Oh, so do I. Would you like a drink? Well... It's French. Oh. Someone gave it me last time I was in France. I hate the stuff myself, but I, I never can resist a bit of a smuggle. Well, I shouldn't have said that, should I? I haven't said a word. Cheers. I, I, I brought it in wrapped up in a pair of... Cheers. Look! The beasts! They're back again. There.
they weren't coming back till next Saturday. I must be mistaken. Well, what are you going to do? Well, I don't think I'm going to do anything spectacular. about seven or eight of them. You're not afraid, are you? Not exactly. What are you going to do? Well, the best thing I can do is get back to the car and follow that truck as soon as it pulls off. Yes, but supposing you miss it? There's only one way out of here, isn't there? Yes. Then I shan't miss it. What about me? Now, you can help. Oh, good. Now, you stay here and keep an eye on them. The number of the truck, the number of the landing craft, uh, anything that gives a line on them. Now, will you do that? Yes, rather. And keep out of sight. Yes. Good luck. Oh, thank you very much. They weren't due till Saturday. Uh huh. Well, they've dumped the stuff in our hut on a disused airfield. Well, it's about eight miles inland at a place called Bedlet. Oh, the whole place is deserted. It looks as though it hasn't been used for years. Well, I thought I'd go in and take a look later on as soon as it gets dark. this one got any shard trails I expect so come and have a look well, how many do you want about four cases hmm. oh, there's a couple here but that's the lot I'm afraid it will be just when I've got a customer waiting uh, we shall have some more in on the 19th I expect I'll give you a ring. Okay. Give me a ring on the 19th. Did that mean another cargo was being landed that day? Very soon, the little bits of the jigsaw began to fit into place. The French customs came through with the news that a British yacht, which had been buying large quantities of liqueurs, had just left Boulogne. Then one of our own patrols reported that a yacht seemed to be transferring stores to a duck in mid-channel. And bright and early on the morning of the 19th...
We are customers, officers. Sit over here, will you? We want to ask you some questions. You aren't obliged to say anything, you understand? Yeah. Your name is Stephen Lazavik? Which? Which? You are the owner and the master of the amphibious craft AXD-714? Yeah. We want some information and we believe that you can give it to us. What are the names of the men who run the organization you work for? I don't understand. I don't work for anyone. Look, we're not stupid, Lazovich. This is big business. Thousands of pounds involved. And you're only an employee. We know that. If you know so much, why come and ask me? We want the names of the men who put up the money and plan the jobs. Why should they go scot-free and you suffer? I think it over. You would much better make up your mind now and tell us. I told you I'd think it over. Just as you like. I must warn you, anything you say may be taken down and used in evidence. Stand up, please. Stephen Lazovich, we shall be arresting you and handing you to the police. You'll be charged with being knowingly concerned in the fraudulent attempt at the evasion of the duty of the customs, contrary to Section 304 of the Customs and Excise Act 1952. Do you wish to say anything? I wish to say nothing. All right, Harris. Take him to the station. That seemed to be the end of the Seabriness affair, and we were just closing our files on the case when something happened to make us open them again. Young Kenyon was alone in the office one Sunday afternoon, catching up on his paperwork, when old Harry showed in a visitor. Hello, sir. Hello. What brings you here? Uh, we, we can talk private. Well, there's no one here but me. How'd you get out? I'm on bill. My case is gonna come up the week after next. I see. When we are in Seabriness, you say you wish information. So you have thought it over. Well? Well, I got information to sell. Sell? Sell. I do not wish to spend two years in English prison, so I give you information, you let me go free, huh? That's not up to me. I can only inform the authorities. They decide. I know of plan to smuggle a big lot of drug into England in three weeks' time. How big? Thirty pound. Thirty pounds weight? Thirty pound weight. Do you know how much money that involves? How would they dispose of it? They know. All right. You better give me the details. First, you promise me to let me go free. I told you, I can't promise that. You got the big boss over you? Yes. Yeah. All right, I'll talk to him, please. He's not here. This is Sunday. You better come back and see him tomorrow. I can't do that. Why not? It's too dangerous for me to come here. Uh, perhaps we can meet some other place? If you like. I'll tell you what. I'll give you my home telephone number. You can bring me that tomorrow morning about nine and we can arrange a place to meet. Oh, you better give me your address. Oh, it's uh, King's Court Hotel, Leinster Gardens. King's Court Hotel, Leinster Gardens. That's Bayswater, isn't it? Yeah. When do you say this stuff is coming in? In three weeks today, the 30th. The 30th. Do you know how? In ship. Do you know which ship? Yeah. I know. But you aren't telling. All right. You can see the bus tomorrow. But don't run away with the idea you're going to get off scot-free because you're not. Please. There is a back way out. Yes? You show me, please. All right. You can go down these stairs. There's a door at the bottom. Thank you. <laughs> Hello? What? What? Yeah, I can't hear a word. Speaking? Who? Uh, River Police, sir. Sergeant Dodson. Uh, sorry to disturb you at a party, but we rang your home and they gave us his number. Yeah. 
We've got a chap here with your visiting card on him. We wondered whether you knew anything about him. Yeah, that's right, sir. Oh, big chap, about six foot two, forty-ish. Uh, no, sir, we don't know his name. We rather hoped you'd be able to tell us. Yeah. Oh, uh, what was that again, sir? L A S O V I C. Yeah. No, I'm afraid I can't do that, sir. You see, he's dead. <laughs> I'll come down straight away. <laughs> Hello, Sergeant. Hello, sir. Well, it's Lazarevich, all right. Friend of yours, sir? No. He came to see me today and said he had some information about some contraband. Did he give you the information? No. Any idea how he came to be in the water? Nothing to show, sir. That's quite a knock he had in the head. His friends may have found out he'd been to see me and... Uh... Oh, not necessarily. They often get a knock like that while they're in the water. Anyway, the doctor will soon tell us whether it was before death or after. Anything on him other than my card? No, not a thing, sir. Pockets have been cleared right out. Well, that's odd, isn't it? Happens with suicides. They seem to like to make work for us. Doubt if we'd have got this if it hadn't been tucked into his breast pocket. Must have overlooked it. Oh, uh, by the way, sir, we shall want you for the inquest. Identification, you know. All right. Anything else? No, sir. Sure, then. Now you're going back to your party, sir? Yes. She's rather nice. Good night, sir. Good night. I'm from the Customs and Excise. Right. You had a Mr. Lazovich staying here. We did have. Somebody left yesterday. Have you any idea where he went? I'm afraid not, sir. He didn't leave a forwarding address. Did he take his luggage with him? Yes, sir. At least his friends did, sir. His friends? Well, Mr. Lazovich rang up last night to say he didn't have time to get back here himself, but his friends would collect his luggage and pay his bill. I see. What time is this? About 10 o'clock last night, sir. About 10 o'clock last night. Did you get a good look at his friends? No, sir. I wasn't on duty. Gee. Are you sure they didn't leave anything behind? Quite sure, sir. Well, look, if anything arrives, Mr. Lazovich, a letter, a telegram, anything, I want you to see we get it straight away, all right? Yes, sir. Well, that's the address. Thank you, sir. Yes, what is it? Cleaners for Mr. Lazovich, five and six to pay. Well, take it to the hall porter, can't you? Uh, who did you say? Mr. Lazovich. Oh, uh, Mr. Kenyon. Has it just arrived from Mr. Lassovic? What is it? I don't know, sir. Something you sent to the cleaners on Saturday. Will you take it, sir? I certainly will. There's five and six, Mr. Pay, sir. Oh, is there? Give the boy the change. Thank you, sir. New suit? That's odd. Is the great white chief in? Yes, he's all alone. Come in. Oh, can I see you a moment, sir? Oh, come in, Michael. I've been looking at your report on this gentleman, Lazovic. Vich, sir. Oh, really? <laughs> you sure he said 30 pounds of drugs, not 30 ounces? Quite sure. I checked it with him myself. Do you realize what that'd be worth today? Mm -hmm. About 100,000 pounds. More like 300? I don't think he was pulling your leg. Well, if he was, he won't pull it again. No. And if he was telling the truth, it's a heck of a thing. One of the largest consignments of dope in history, and all we got is a date. Could mean any one of a hundred ships. What do we know of Mr. Lazovich, apart from this Sebrinesque job? That's what I want to see you about. He was Polish. Been in this country since the war. What about the hotel? Don't they know him? No. His luggage was picked up last night at 10 o'clock by two friends of his. After he was dead? Presumably. They left nothing behind. But he did. 
What? On Saturday, he's in a suit at the cleaners. It came back this morning. These were left in the pockets. Empty envelope. Addressed to Miss Rita Compton, 15 Breakspear Mews, London West 1. There's a pretty design on the back. And uh, look at this. Looks like a date and a time. 30th of October, 11 p.m. I think we'd better see Miss Compton. Perhaps she can give us a lead. Good morning. Miss Rita Compton in? She's not at the moment. Have you any idea when she'll be back? Any minute, I imagine. She's just gone to the shops. Do you mind if I wait for her? It's rather important. You better come in. Thank you. I'm Roger Compton, her brother. Sit down, won't you? Thank you. May I ask what you want to see my sister about? Well, perhaps you could help me. You ever heard her talk of a man called Stephen Lazovich? No, I don't think so. It's a bit early, but would you care for a drink? No, thank you. Coffee? Nothing, thank you. This man, uh, Lazovich, is he supposed to be a friend of my sister's? That I don't know. But you hope to find out? Yes, I do. Sounds intriguing. Rita. We have a visitor. This is Mr... White. Mr. White, my sister Rita. How do you do? How do you do? Mr. White wants to know something about one of your boyfriends. Miss Compton, do you know that handwriting? Yes, I do. Is it from a friend of yours? Yes, quite a good friend. His name wasn't Lazovich, was it? Stephen Lazovich? No, I don't know anyone of that name. May I ask who it was from? Yes, it was from someone I, I liked very much. I met on holiday in France. Then you wouldn't know how it came into Lazovich's possession. You sound like a policeman, Mr. White. Policeman? Oh, no. No, I'm not a policeman. I'm glad of that. May I ask you one thing? Do, please. How do you happen to be in possession of this envelope? It was found on the body of this man, Stephen Lazovich, who was pulled out of the Thames last night. Oh. I'd like a drink. Darling, isn't it rather early? All right. What was Lazovich to you, Mr. White? Oh, nothing. Just a business acquaintance. Oh, I see. Sure you won't have one? No, thanks. No, I must be off. I'm sorry we can't be more helpful. Well, I'm sorry, too, but if we get any more information, you won't mind if I drop round again, will you? Not at all, and I won't be here after tomorrow. Are you going away? Yes, to the south of France. Lucky you. <laughs> well, goodbye, Miss Compton. Goodbye. Mr. Compton. As I came away from the mews, I couldn't make up my mind whether the young woman was really as innocent as she looked. But there was an easy way to find out. If the Comptons were going to France, one of our chaps was going too. And since a pretty girl was involved, the obvious choice was Michael Kenyon. Thank you. Have you any valuables or anything other than your personal belongings? No. And what currency are you taking? Five pounds. Open that one, please. Perhaps if you push the clasp to the left and then up, you might find it a little easier. It's funny how one forgets little things like that. Thank you. Thank you. Something wrong, sir? I think I've forgotten my shaving kit. Funny how one forgets little things like that. Attention, please. We'll all... Fasten your safety belts, please.
from Michael Kenyon to Alec White. Arrived cab. Address Carlton Hotel. Contrived acquaintance with Rita Compton aboard plane. Compton staying aboard motor yacht Fantasia. Repeat, Fantasia. Guests of Madame Simonetta, head of London Fashion House. Am continuing observation. We'll keep you informed. sex appeal. I'm going over to find out. Ask him to dinner. We'll get a closer look at him. I'd like to come to dinner tonight. Why, I'd love to. In which particular grotto do you live? <laughs> Sorry, I've got to get all this stuff on. Oh, it's you. How do you do? Nice to see you again. I must try this swimming business sometime. Well, you should. I'll give you some lessons. When? This afternoon? No, not this afternoon. I'm working. Working? I'm a model. I work for Madame Simonetta. That's her yacht over there. You will come to dinner, won't you? I'd like to very much. On the yacht? On the yacht. At eight o'clock. Back for the harbour. Fine. Do you want me to dress? Do you, do you want me to dress? Do you want me to dress? Le monsieur vient Parlant de chasse et de chien Dans un bar américain Bob le whisky du matin un enfant bleu Dans un berceau de bois blanc Fermant ses yeux innocents Leur tout doux, tout doucement La scène plie Sous le ventre des chalands sur la berge des enfants Sans l'instant souriant Sans mineur cri Sous le poids d'un continent Là-haut passe un régiment Il y aura des survivants Le soleil, lui, ah, enchanting. Quite it incredible. was perfect. Very well. I've not heard you play that one before, Max. You liked it? It was charming. If you like that sort of thing, and you don't. A bit sentimental for me. Nonsense. It was perfect. All right, all right. I'll leave you to wallow in it. I must go. I've got a date. Is she young and pretty? I think so. Well, then you better hurry. You mustn't keep her waiting. Darling, have you got any francs to spare? I'm a bit short. I'm sorry. I've got 5,000, if that's any good to you. Thank you. Thank you, madame. Night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Drinks too much, that brother of yours. That's his affair, I should have thought. Is it? Children. Children. Yours must be a fascinating business, madame. At what point do you dress designers decide to raise skirts or plunge necks. When you hear your rivals doing the opposite. Then I'm putting a padded cell in case I talk in my sleep. Do you have much trouble with the snoopers? Snoopers? Yes, people who sneak into your private shows and steal your designs. <laughs> oh, you mean pirates? No, we have our own way of dealing with them. I'm sure you have. Oh, yes. I don't like snoopers, as you call them. 
And now I suppose you two want to go to the casino. Yes, please. No gambling. No, just dancing. You don't approve of gambling, madame. <laughs> well, long time ago I decided that the chance of winning 2,000 francs doesn't compensate for two extra wrinkles in the morning. You know, I think it's getting rather cold. Do you mind if I borrow a fur? Not at all. Come and take your choice. For you, another? Not for me, thanks. Attractive girl, our Rita. Very. Are you, um, you done here for long? No, only a few more days, I'm afraid. Pity. You've only just joined our little family. You stay here all the time, I suppose. Me? Oh, no. I go where my boat goes. You see, I'm a sailor. It's in the family. My great-great-grandfather was a pirate. He was hanged. My great-grandfather was captain of a ship at Trafalgar. He was shot. My grandfather and father were both smugglers and died in prison. Now I have four brothers. They're all smugglers. One in Tangier, one in Hong Kong, and two in jail. It's all very sad. I take it you aren't going to follow in your family's footsteps? Me? Oh, no. I don't like danger. I look after yachts. For beautiful rich ladies like Madame? Mm-hmm. That way I hope to die in my bed. Oh, Rita, you look particularly ravishing tonight. It's amazing what borrowed plumes do for a woman. If you'll forgive us, I think we ought to go. Certainly. Don't keep her out too late, Mr. Kenyon. We have a dress show tomorrow afternoon. I'll bring her back in time for that, I promise you. Well, thanks for a wonderful dinner. Oh, uh, and the music. Good night. Good night. South of France, heavenly night, moon in just the right place, girl in just the right dress. Perfect. You sure it isn't the brandy talking? Well, it could be the brandy. Whatever it is, it's all very pleasant. But it has to end soon. You're going back? Unfortunately, yes. Work? Slavery. What do you do? Me? I'm in a bank. And you're staying at the car? Oh, hang the expense and the holiday, I see. Are you staying here long? That depends. On what? If drinking like this, you'll be no good for the job I want you for. Oh, for heaven's sake, shut up. I don't have to I think we'd better break those up. Not till they start throwing things. That'll happen any minute now. Max won't stand for that. Max, 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 could he do the job I've got to do? Having a gay evening, you... This brother of yours, he... <laughs> oh, good evening, Mr. Kenyon. Good evening. Like a drink, Kenyon? Not for me, thanks. I must be going. Are you going to take Mr. Kenyon to Madame de Berg's garden party tomorrow afternoon? I'd love to, if he'd like to come. Well, I would very much, but I'm afraid I've got some business to attend to. Business in Cannes? Perhaps I could look in for a drink later. What time do you get back? Oh, about six, I should say. Well, I'll come round then, if I may. Good night. I'll see you safely, sure. Yes, uh, Rita said you'd lend me her underwater kit. 
I had an hour to spare, so I thought I'd come over and pick it up. I heard you were doing some business in Cannes. I was, but I finished. Didn't you go to the door? No, no, I begged off. Those affairs bore me. Well, I'll get you that equipment. You know, you want to have somebody with you the first time you go down. Want me to come along? Oh, don't bother. No bother at all. I'll take your launch and go out between the islands. Mm -hmm. I've got my kid up top. All right. Here we go. Hey, wait a minute. Huh? Close that valve. Oh, yeah. You were right behind me. This mask thing went wrong. I only just made it. <laughs> Terribly sorry, old fella. I knew it wasn't as easy as you seem to think. Here, come on, I'll give you a hand. <laughs> Lucky I was with you. I don't know what I'd have done without you. Vous anglais, vous avez la vie dure. Ces questions ne valent plus rien. Vous auriez pu mourir asphyxié. Uh, what's he say? Do you know how this works? Well, roughly, not exactly. <laughs> When you are under the water, you're breathing through this. And the bad air goes through there, where the crystals make it pure again. Vous comprenez? Mm -hmm. But if the crystals are uh, terminé, uh, how you say, uh, finished, exhausted, you're breathing the bad air again, and you're dying. Well, how do you know when the crystals have had it? Comment c'est temps que les cristaux sont fichus? On le sait, on doit le changer après chaque plongée. My friend said that you have to change the crystals each time you go under the water. Have you changed it this time? No. Eh bien, mon cher ami, it is lucky you are still alive. Hmm. Well, goodbye, Valence. Au revoir. Bonjour. Report from Michael Kenyon to Alec White. Fantasia left Cannes during night, therefore unable to interview Roger Compton. French customs inquiries indicate destination Marseille. Am following.
snake is the badge of the Panathenian steamship line. They've got six ships, all named after snakes, the python, the adder, the cobra, and so on. Well, the python left Marseille last night at 8 o'clock and is due in the port of London on the morning of the 30th. And the Fantasia arrives at Marseille when? 24 hours before the python left. Well, that seems to tie that up. Yeah, but does it? I got the French customs to go over the python. They couldn't find a thing. Well, don't worry. If there is any dope aboard, and it looks as though there is, we'll find it if we have to take the ship apart. Anything else, sir? Nope. Better put your report in writing. The old man's beginning to sit up and take notice. Well, gentlemen, Mr. White has given you the facts as far as we know them at present. Apart from the initial information, which we obviously can't check, it's all circumstantial evidence, and we may have put the wrong construction on it. But I don't think so. I think there's almost certainly a large consignment of drugs aboard that ship somewhere. And I don't need to tell you how important it is that we should intercept it. Have you anything to say, Mr. Bennett? Only this. From the moment the python enters the channel, she'll be under constant observation day and night. Every station and officer in the area has been alerted. Once she's in the Thames, Holt's men will go through her with a fine tooth comb. Don't worry about that, son. Nothing will get past us. And the yacht? The French authorities are keeping an eye on it for us. Excuse me. Yes? It's for you, Mr. White. Thank you. White speaking. <coughs> oh. Right. Thanks, Michael. Well, oh, gentlemen, it looks as though something's happening. Kenya just had a message from our French friends at Marseille. Roger Compton and his sister have booked seats on a plane leaving Marseille tomorrow afternoon. Destination London. in their baggage. Do you want to see them? No. You better have them searched, though. No, I agree. All right. All right, sir. Thank you. And empty your pocket onto the table. Thank you. And your slip. Nothing at all on either of them. You're passing them through? Yes. Larkins? Not so far. We are passing them through. Good afternoon, madam. Have you booked a table? Yes, in the name of Compton. Ah, uh, Mr. Compton's table. Good day, monsieur. Good afternoon, monsieur. Uh, Table for one? I'll wait a bit, thank you. I'm expecting somebody. Yeah, very much, yeah. Kenyon here. She's having lunch. In the restaurant at the Windsor Hotel. No, just a moment ago. Mm-hmm. Well, please yourself. I'll stick around here anyway. Bye. <laughs> Yes, please do. It's quite a jump from Cannes to Kensington. Excuse me, sir. Will you be lunching? No, I won't. Thanks, much. Thank you. I'm expecting Roger. I thought you might be. You're very fond of him, aren't you? Yes, I am. Is there anything wrong with that? No. But he's hardly a sober, upright citizen, is he? I mean, look what happened when he taught me underwater swimming. Yes, he told me about that. Good thing he was there. I have an idea. I might have been better off if he hadn't been. Why do you say that? Are you worried about him? No. Funny. I had an idea you might be worried about something. 
I don't know what you're talking about. Don't you? I'm probably wasting my time. All I wanted to say was that if you're in some sort of trouble and you'd like someone to hold your hand, I'd like to be that person. Ah, Mr. Compton. Good afternoon. It is, Roger. The lady has already arrived. Good morning. Oh, we're just talking about you. He's not madly keen on you as a swimming instructor. Well, I think that's very ungrateful. As I told Rita, it was a good job I was around. Oh, yes, you did point out to me how much I owed to you. Don't give it a thought. I feel like a drink. Louis. You've had enough. Well, I must be going. Back to your bank? Yes, uh, behind the bars. Oh, don't talk about being behind bars, old fellow. Why, does it make you thirsty? Are you in the telephone book? Yes. I'll give you a ring if I may. Do. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Got some news for you. News? You know that chap that was hanging about in the mews? Well, he's hanging about in the bar now. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. Well, I think we'd better call the whole thing off. Don't be ridiculous. Well, if we're being watched. In another ten minutes, we won't be. Ever seen the kitchens of a big hotel? No. Well, follow me. Over there. Ah, Monsieur Compton. Oh, hello, Luigi. You're looking for me, eh? Uh, yes, there's a lady in the restaurant. I don't wish to see her father's with her. Which way do the staff go out? Follow me. I show you. Can I see the ship papers, please? A little bit early, aren't you? Weren't you expecting us? Well, we don't usually see you chaps on this run until we're in the pool. Any passengers on board? No. Nothing special in the cargo? No, just the usual. To. Me? Why didn't you tell me it was there? You never asked me. Give me a scare. And a spoon. Now. 
Well? We've practically taken her apart, sir. Can't find a sign of anything. Well, we better start all over again. It must be there somewhere. I hope you're right. The captain's beginning to get persecution mania. You yeah, can't help his troubles. He shouldn't carry dope. If he is carrying dope. We have a pretty strong hunch that it's there somewhere. All right. We'll take another look. I saw a splash. I don't know anything about it. Well, we'd like to have a word with you, just the same. Pull in alongside the houseboat there, will you? All right. All right, swing around. Hello. Hello, what are you doing here? I'm in the customs service. Oh. I'm sure you're a credit to it. Is that your boat? No, I hired it. Is there any law against that? No. Where were you going? Down the river. For pleasure. And then? Back again. Also for pleasure. At this hour of night? Alone? Yes. Do you mind if we look around? Yeah, William. Cigarette? Not the moment, thanks. Forgive me, sir. Have you ever seen one of those before? No. no. One of our launches stopped a cabin cruiser with Rita Compton aboard. She's outside now. I found this in the cabin. You remember I told you that they were always going underwater swimming? Well, this is a canister from an underwater equipment. I don't get it. Neither do I yet. The APO in the launch says he thought he saw a splash as her boat went under London Bridge. Well, the smash could have been caused by somebody dropping overboard. Somebody in a frogman's kit. Our brother, for instance. You think he's underwater out there now? Exactly. What on earth for? During the war, frogmen used to swim long distances underwater to stick limpet mines to the keels of enemy ships. And you think there's a limpet mine on the keel of the python? Could be. Hmm. With drugs in place of explosives. And he could have fixed it there while the python was in Marseille. Get the CPO to send every available launch across to the Python at once. Miles. Sir? Better check the fenders. We've had them all up, so there's nothing there. I'd like you to do something for your brother. What? We know he's out there underwater, and we know why. Then you know more than I do. We've got men posted along both the banks. He can't possibly get ashore without our knowing. And why are you worrying? We shouldn't like him to drown. Oh, how very friendly. You probably don't know it, but the river runs at about eight knots. 
and the currents are murder. We lost a man last month in the pool. He just disappeared. If Roger was out there, he could take care of himself. But he's not. So you don't have to worry. So you won't tell me where you're going to pick him up? I wasn't going to pick him up. I see. Let me ask you something else. Well? Have you ever seen a drug addict? No. It's not a very pretty sign. I'll take your word for it. You'll take my word for something else, too. That package your brother's collecting out there contains enough drugs to supply every dope fiend in the country for the next two years. If he gets us ashore, 40 or 50 people will die in misery. And you will have helped to murder them. That's not true. Oh, I see you're trying to trap me. No. Just telling you the facts of life. Well, there's no need to. I know them already. And I'm bored of your company and your office. I'd like to go home.
know, your fare was up last stop, sir. Oh, was it? Where does this bus go to? Victoria's our terminus. Victoria? Yes, all right, I'll go there. That should be another tux, please. Hey, go steady. to let you know the search is off. I told you you were wasting your time. That's a matter of opinion, but this isn't. It lasts for half an hour, 40 minutes at the outside. And it's over an hour since you dropped your brother under the bridge. What a good sense of time you have. Is that all you have to say to me? Yes. Very well. Excuse me. May I go now? Yes, but I'm afraid we'll have to keep your boat a little while longer. One of our cars will take you home. I can see myself home. As you wish. Show this lady the way ashore, will you? Yes, sir. Roger! Roger! Well, where did you get to? I was afraid something had happened to you. Are you all right? Perfectly. No thanks to you. And I couldn't help it. The customs people picked me up. You didn't tell them anything? I didn't need to. They already know. And I'll tell you something. Michael Kenyon is a customs officer. I knew that. Why didn't you tell me? What was the point? You'd have only gotten to a flat. What happened to the package? It's in a safe place. The customs think it's dope. Do they know? They weren't right, were they? Yes. And you knew all the time? No, I thought the same as you did. I thought it was currency until the package burst open. And then I knew. What are you going to do? They double-crossed us. We're going to do the same to them. Our alibi's perfect. I got the stuff from under the python, but you were pulled in by the customs people. I couldn't manage alone. Had to drop the stuff in the river to save my life. It's all a great tragedy, but there it is. You mean you'd keep it? Sell it? Yes, why not? But it's unthinkable. You couldn't deal with drugs, Roger. You couldn't. Please, get out now while there's a chance. Oh, no. Where is the package? It's in the cloakroom of Victoria Station. All right. Leave it there. No, my dear. Why not? I've got other plans. Where are you going? To them, of course. Tell them my story. Oh, what a tragedy. All that trouble and now it's at the bottom of the river. No, Roger, please. I'm sorry, darling. May I come in? We've been expecting you. Everything went wrong. Rita got picked up by the customs. I had to get ashore as best I could. It wasn't easy. And the package? I couldn't cope with that, I'm afraid. It's, it's at the bottom of the river. Oh, too bad. Well, we shall have to try again, I suppose. I wouldn't try for a month or two if I were you. The customs are onto us. You think so? I'm sure of it. Ask Rita. Yes, I think I will. Rita, where has your brother hidden that package? I don't know what you're talking about. Come on, where is it? I told you, it's at the bottom of the river. Do you think I'm a fool? I don't like people who think I'm a fool. Tell him, Roger, please. Shut up! Well? Where is it? All right, I'll tell you. So you can put that thing away. If you kill me, you'll never find out. Very well. And I want 5,000, not two. You want 5,000? You shall have 5,000. And I want it now, before I tell you where it is. I'm sorry, I don't carry that much money around with me. Well, Madame would have it in the safe, wouldn't she? Yes, I suppose so. Shall we go and see? Don't go, Roger, please. Good night, Rita. Good night. Kenyon. Oh, it's you. I must speak to you. It's urgent. I'm ready to make a bargain with you. you. You want to know where a certain package is. I can tell you. 
But I want something in exchange. No, not for myself, for Roger. He's in danger. It's Max. They've just left. They've gone to Madame Simonetta's and then on to Victoria Station. That's where the package is in the cloakroom at Victoria Station. Back up a bit and wait there, will you? We're from the customs. We'd like to take a look at a parcel that was left here between 10.30 and midnight. Customs, you say? That's right. Well, you better come in. You start that in, Michael. Larkins. You've been here all the evening? No, I only come on at midnight. But anything to come in after 10 o'clock will be over there. Has anybody collected a parcel from this section since you've been on? No. All right, we'll take a look. Yeah, I didn't say you could open them. That'll be all right. Well, I better ask the station master. I don't want to take the responsibility. Well, we'll see him afterwards. You won't get into any trouble. I hope not. And this is everything that's come in since 10 o'clock. Yes, that's it. Oh, there's one in here. I put it in here because it was leaking. Have a look. Michael. This is it. Well, well. Now look, Mr. Kenny will stay here with you, but out of sight. When somebody turns up with the ticket for this parcel, you do two things. First, you tell Mr. Kenyon, without them knowing, of course. Then you give them the parcel, you understand? Yes. If anybody comes for this parcel, I'll tell him, and then give it to him. Good. Directly our man turns up, you follow him. Larkins and I will be hanging about between here and the main doors. Right? Right. There's a chair over there, if you want to sit down. Thanks. I'll be making a cup of char in a minute. Lovely. You look like being in for long waits, you know. We don't get many people about this hour of the night. They like to wait till the streets are there. Oh. Here you are. Man or woman? Neither. It's one of our chaps. Charlie Dayton. What does Charlie do? He's a porter on the forecourt. Oh, I'll give him the parcel and make sure he signs for it. Yeah, okay. nervous. I too would be nervous if I'd been as foolhardy as you. It's not you I'm worried about. It's that car behind us. They mustn't catch us with this. Let me out at the next corner. All right. Get ready to jump. You're in a bit of a hurry, aren't you? Yes, we are. Customs and excise investigation department. That car in front contains contraband. If we lose it, it'll be your fault. Did you know that one of the men dropped off at the corner of Mark Street? You sure? Yes, went off through the alleyway, carrying a parcel. Can you pick up the rolls if we go after him? Leave it to us, sir. Back to Mark Street, quickly. R2, calling information room. I'm following Black Rolls. Registration LXT22. Suspected of carrying contraband. Travelling in the direction of the city. Over.
registration number LXT22. Over. Right. No sign of him, sir. I'm afraid we've lost him. But let's take a look at Simonella's. It's across the square. Go ahead. Shall I? Go ahead. Have a look around the back. I'll stay here. Yes, sir. Parker? Yes, sir. Get on the headquarters. I want some more men around here right away. visitor for you. Oh, you'll see. Oh, you are an elusive Pimpernel. I've been trying to see you. I do want to congratulate you. You've done an absolutely first-class job. Thanks to you, there are now six more Samarkand San Martins in the world. And I thought perhaps you'd like a picture of them to remind you. Well, I mustn't keep you. I expect you're awfully busy. Goodbye. Bye. Wait here, please. I'm so very sorry about your brother. It wasn't your fault. What do they want me for? I can't tell you that. They're waiting to see you now. You remember you said... If ever I wanted someone to hold my hand. <laughs> 